got to see a little bit of uh, what we call the short challenge in the Speedy Adventures community, where we'll take a game, uh, usually a game short in length, such things such as demos, game jam projects, fan games, or just short little adventure games of the sort, and uh, whoever wants to join in, speed runs the game in secret, and then at the end of the the time period we could to compare our runs compare our strategies see what we found out and uh, it's a lot of fun if you want to check that out feel free to stop by the speedy adventures discord i'm sure we can get a link for you in the chat but now what we have for you is the wolves running gabriel knight sins of the fathers 100 percent wolves say hello give him a little bark howdy folks yeah the wolves right here in the flesh Excited for this run. Thank you for the nice intro, Spade. Um, yeah. All right. Gabriel Knight sends the Fathers. This is the first of three of the Gabriel Knight games. You know this one's really cool because it has a colon in the title. Gabriel Knight colon sins of the Fathers. It sounds intense. Should be a really good one. Um, we are doing hundred uh, percent, so that means that yeah, we're going to be getting all the points, or at least we're going to try to get all the points. Um, there are some weird quirks with this game. I'll try to talk through as much of it as I can. Um, this particular route doesn't deviate majorly from what we call good ending, which is sort of the, uh, I guess, any percent route. Um, but yeah, there are some differences. We'll see some new screens that you don't normally see, and uh, we'll do we'll try to do it fast. So um, yeah, if we're good to go, I'll, I'm happy to count us down um, on the timer. So. Cool, let's do it. So we'll do it on uh, on three, right? Three, two, one, and go. And here we go. It's always good when the uh, the runner takes an extra long pause before go, right? So anyways, yeah, this is a uh, story told in 10 days. So we are on day one. And uh, pretty much our goal for this particular day is to unlock where this crime scene is. So some, some kind of lore uh, for folks that don't know. Uh, we play as Gabriel Knight, who's kind of a struggling writer. He owns this bookshop that we're in. We're going to try to set this to go as fast as humanly possible for obvious reasons. Uh, we're also going to read the paper. Um, anyways, we're researching uh, some murders that have been in the area, uh, which people have called the voodoo murders, so it sounds spooky. Um, so we're going to just do some investigating because we're writing a book on it. Um, we've got some friends in the police department here. Uh, so we're going to pop in here and we're going to see if we can get some information on uh, the, the latest killing that just happened. Um, you'll notice that I've set the speed up again here. Um, for whatever reason, there's a couple runes I'm here. in this game that do not respect the speed setting, so you have to remind it. This is one of them. Um, cool. So one thing we're going to do for the 100% thing is we're going to open this up. We're going to get that ready to go. Uh, let's head on out of here. And we're going to head to the cathedral. We're just kind of collecting some items as you do in adventure games. And we're also going to talk to some people as also you do in adventure games. But um, we're doing so in a certain way to try to make this as fast as possible. There's a lot of variations on this. Uh, that was actually a really tough screen that we just did. So we're bringing this mime down to make fun of this cop who absolutely hates mimes. It's a you know, perfect connection for us because we need to listen into the radio over here real quick. Um, so we're gonna just real quick do that. Uh, here we go. Boom. Uh, this is important because this unlocks the latest crime scene area because of course it's confidential. We're not actually a detective, even though we're kind of playing detective here. Um, and so yeah, now we have that location unlocked, but first we're gonna do a little pit stop at our grandma's house. Uh, it's, you know, something we gotta do here. Say hello here. There's a nice little hug. We can't skip that. And who would? It's heartwarming. Uh, in any case, we're going to head upstairs. Uh, we've we've said our hellos and stuff. We're going to grab this book, which is actually a journal um, from Gabriel's father. Uh, we are going to do this very interesting puzzle here with a clock, but thankfully we know the answer, so it's not too bad. Three of dragons. Boom. All right. We're going to grab a couple of secret things in this super cool clock here. Uh, we are going to read. It's important to do some reading. And of course, the reading is important because we are trying to get all... Uh, all the points there. So we're going to dip on out of here. Uh, we also do need to have a quick conversation with Grandma. The hug was not enough. So we're quickly just going to ask about the family a little bit. How's everybody doing? 
and then we are going to keep it moving. We do have to wait for this other warm embrace here. There's going to be a lot of relations going on in here. So that's solid. We're going to head to the crime scene. Scene of the crime. And we are going to skip the scene. Uh, I love the little warning message that it has saying, are you sure you want to skip it? Most of the story is hiding in there. You're just going to solve puzzles outside of that. Uh, we're aware of the risk and we're going to take it. All right, so we're just doing a little bit of uh, sleuthing ourselves here. Police didn't do a very good job. We actually found uh, some stuff on the ground, in particular that snake scale. Um, so we're going to try to find out whose snake that is. And that's going to be a big part of this 100% route, actually. All right, so that uh, that wraps up day one. This is uh, Grace, by the way, or Grace, as Tim Curry, who does the voice for Gabriel Knight, would say, if you could hear him say it. We'll maybe listen to it during the credits. It's a, an excellent performance. In any case, uh, Grace is going to help us out a lot. She does a lot of the research for us. She runs the shop while we're running around like a crazy person. Um, and she uh, will get us out of a couple binds here and there, uh, which is going to be lovely. Um, so we've moved on to day two. I sure hope we've got something like 44 points. It looks like we do. So we are on pace so far. It's easy to get off pace, folks. Let me tell you what. All right, here we go. We've got some stuff here. We're going to read the newspaper. We're going to do that every day. Those are missable points. We're also going to grab this uh, handy dandy gift certificate to give to somebody a bit later on. That's always going to be a, a fun bit here. So this is Dr. John, totally up to nothing, uh, nothing bad at all in the slightest. So we're going to ask him about some questions here. Um, we need to go through a whole bunch of this stuff until we get all the points. We need all the points. Some of that's skippable, of course. Uh, we are doing the 100% all points route. So you'll notice that the, uh, I don't know, the, <laughs> the dialogue trees are going ham and uh, Gabriel Knight's lips are flapping big time. Um, we are using uh, these, like Quan VM basically is what we call it, uh, Urquan's version of Scum VM. Um, there's a ton of key repeating that uh, is involved with that. It's also on the newer version that we use on Scum VM in general. Uh, but in any case, uh, what we can do is we can hold down enter um, to kind of front load a lot of uh, kind of like inputs and it rips through conversation super fast for us, which is incredibly helpful when you're speedrunning. Um, this game has a tendency to not want to run on <laughs> newer machines, so these uh, emulators are very important for us these days. All right, so we're back at the police station. We need to go formally meet uh, Detective Mosley, so we're going to just ask permission to go behind the desk to talk to him. Detective Mosley, of course, played by Mark Hamill. It's a star-studded cast. There he is. He's in charge of the voodoo murders case. We've promised him a picture in the book if um, if he helps us out kind of a thing. And so he's uh, he's down. We're friends. It's all good. Um, so he is allowing us to get this file, uh, which has some drawings, or I should say photographs, of weird patterns that have been on every single one of the murders. And we actually sketched one a bit earlier. Um, so we are quickly going to take a look at those get the points. We are going to turn the heat up because we're going fast. We need to turn the heat up on this run so we can start cooking with some gas, if you will, here. Um, the other reason we turn the heat on is because we actually need him to take his jacket off. There's nothing to worry about here. We are just going to uh, grab something out of his pocket here at some point, uh, but we do need to wait for the heat to, to hit. Thankfully, that's a heck of a heating system they have here. It happens Pretty fast, considering. You're going to ask for a coffee, though. It's We've done enough speed running for a little bit, so let's take a coffee break here, folks. I hope everybody is well, by the way. Uh, really excited that uh, Speedy Adventures is doing a marathon. This is super cool, and I hope you've been enjoying the runs out there. Appreciate y'all. All right. That's enough of a coffee break for me. Let's grab the... Uh, this is actually a badge that we're stealing, so it's no small thing that we're taking, but, uh, you know... We're basically a detective, right? This is fine. I'm going to wait for the coffee dance to happen here, and then we are going to talk to Mosley one more time. And we are going to suggest, uh, hey, we should take a picture together for the book we're talking about. And this is, this is the whole thing, right? Because we're writing this book on this voodoo murder thing, and a little bit of more context on that. There's a whole bunch of people dying in New Orleans where this is set. Um, they seem to be unrelated murders, but we have a hunch that they're actually related. There's a lot of things that are in common here. The drawings uh, being one of them, these like weird patterns that are showing up, right? 
So anyways, we're going to look really, really good for the picture here. Um, and we're going to just pop out really, really fast here. And we're actually going to do something a little, uh, a little naughty. And we're going to steal some of these pictures. So if you're doing the any percent route or the good ending route, as we call it, uh, you can actually just take that folder and just dip out. That's all you need to do. But we're here for the points, folks. So we're actually going to use the photocopier and make some copies. We're channeling our, our inner kinkos here. And we're actually going to return folder back because that's important too. We're being polite. This is a polite speed run. Okay. So folks who know my stream know that this is hot dog day. Day two is hot dog day. And you'll see why in a second. The single greatest sound effect ever recorded on an adventure game. I know no one will disagree with me. So first off, we're going to... Uh, just do a little trade here with the hot dog vendor to get a hot dog. The aforementioned hot dog, of course. And we're going to trade it to this kid right here. Here, listen. Oh, yeah. Sweet munches right there. That's what we're talking about. Uh, the reason we want to do that is because we need to have this kid help us out and get that picture out of the, uh, the grate there. I say grate, it's more of a fence, but you know what I'm talking about. We're going to head on over here, and we are going to hand that picture that we just got back to the uh, artist over here. This guy owes us a favor, and we're going to do kind of a little guy brush three-point thing and immediately cash this thing in. We're, we've messed with you, and now we are going to take advantage of that. So this guy's going to put together all the patterns that we've found on the past few bodies here, uh, which is going to be great. We'll come back to him another day. Uh, the one bit of research that we did was for Malia Getty, who's a, uh, you know, kind of a socialite out here. Um, this guy is like, you can't come in, I don't know who you are. She doesn't know who you are. And we were like, we're on official business and here's my badge. Don't look at it too closely. But anyways, that's good enough to get us in here. And this is actually a really, really nice little scene that they've drawn here. Just shouts out to the folks at Sierra and who put this game together. It is a pretty looking game, in my opinion. I really like it. So we're going to admire the, the scenery for a bit here, and then we're going to talk to Malia a little bit. Um, Malia did show up during the cutscene that we skipped at the crime scene. Um, so we started asking her some questions because she seems to be related to it. But I think Gabriel is up to some other things. Uh, we'll see how that relationship progresses. And that's pretty much all we got to do today for day two. We're just going to head back and of course every day, every good day ends with a little bit of research. So we're going to talk to Grace, Could you do, do some researching. And uh, yeah, there we go. That's day two. We're going to keep on schmoving here. We have to wait for Grace to leave, of course. We can skip through some of these cutscenes early on. This won't be the case uh, further into the run, but take advantage of that. And we're going down. We've got all our points so far. That sweet, sweet 86 point mark. We're doing good. Okie dokie. So we're heading around the corner here. We're popping in and we're beginning day three. Day three is the real gauntlet. I think it's the hardest single day in the run, uh, mainly because of length. There's just so much to do here. Um, so we're gonna try to make sure we don't forget anything because uh, this will be the, yeah, the day it happens. Um, Cool, so we should be good. Get a phone number here, and we're gonna leave. Done with that. All right, daily visit to the police station. Got to check in on what's going on here. Uh, normally I would turn the speed up here, but this walk is so short, by the time I go into the menu, change everything to do it, you know, it's already over, right? Um, so we're interviewing somebody over here. This is Crash, who's in the seat. Police have picked him up for some suspicious activity, and they believe that he is related somehow to these voodoo murders. Um, he's not talking, keeping a, a, a tight lip there. More, you know, all the credit to him, I suppose. Um, so we'll keep an eye on that because that's you know gonna gonna play out in an interesting way later, I'm sure. Um, we've got some graffiti here. We've uh, popped into the cemetery, uh, and so we're gonna just jot these uh, kind of voodoo. Uh, graffiti bits down. We're going to have a chat here with the uh, groundskeeper. This, uh, again, is a hondo-only thing. Normally you don't need to talk to him. He's an interesting fellow. Deserves some of the screen time, so shouts out. Um, but after we have that little conversation, we're just going to dip on over here and talk to Malia. We're not stalking her at all. It's totally normal. Everything's fine here. Don't worry about it. 
We're going to have a little bit of a, a chat. And yeah, and off she goes. Great. All right. So we're going to just dip out here. Uh, a little bit earlier, we actually unlocked this uh, Moonbeam residence location by talking to Dr. John. Um, so Madame Moonbeam, here she is. Uh, she is a fortune teller, but knows a lot about voodoo. So we're going to have her interpret our voodoo code. The other reason that we've been here, and I mentioned this a little bit earlier, is we're looking for a matching snake scale, right? She's got a snake, so that is going to be great for us uh, in the snake game here. So let's uh, let's take a look at the snake here. We're going to take a, a quick little gander. It's a little bit of a, a dance here as well, so, you know, treat yourself. Enjoy, folks. Show me how you hold Griswold. I don't do a very good Tim Curry, but I certainly try. So while she's doing that, I actually really quickly, you might have missed it. Blink and you miss it. Ta-da! Um, we've grabbed some of the snake uh, snake scales out of here, and we're just going to go ahead and just have a look. It's not a match, unfortunately, but uh, we tried. So we're quickly going to do that. We've got all the points, which is good. I just wanted to double check that. And here is where the run gets a little scary. I'm going to be 100% honest with you. This section is a bit buggy. Uh, in any case, we're going to open up here talking to our architect, our, our artist friend here. Um, we need to pick up the uh, finished drawing. Now we have this big circular pattern, which I will later find out is called Vebe. And now this is another exclusive to 100%. Uh, this is another fortune teller who's posted up in uh, in the park here. She's grooving to this band. Let's be honest, it's a tune. So we're going to join the dance here, although we're not going to do too much dancing. We've got the duster on, so we can't you know, get sweaty or something. So we're just going to skip through that. We're just going to look cool. And she's going to do some dancing here. So the reason that this is scary is that if you do this in the incorrect order, this next inventory section, you can actually soft lock. Uh, well, not soft lock, but you can lose a point forever. Um, so we're going to be very careful here. So we're going to use the, mar the, uh, the glass here with the thing. Look at that. There's a snake scale in there. Wouldn't you know? So we're going to scroll up and use that to check uh, to pl basically pluck it out you can't do it in the other direction despite it being faster because that is the thing that will that will fail which is great and then we're going to return this and we should be good 115 is uh dead on that's great that part's very difficult i uh, it might look simple but uh when you're in a hurry nothing's easy you know what i mean all right to the university we need to get learned so it's pretty convenient we've got a uh an open class on voodoo. So we're going to fall asleep during it. Legit, that's what ends up happening. But we'll have a little conversation with Professor Hartridge afterwards. Um, grab some points here through conversations. We're going to show him this fancy picture we got from our artist friend. He loves it. Big fan. Look at how he's walking. He's got a good bounce to his step. So he's going to go make a photocopy because that's, uh, that's what you do in the day, you know, back in the 90s. And uh, real quick, we're also just going to show them this horrific photo of somebody dead for points. So that's fun. Um, great. We're going to head out now. Everything is uh, schmoovin' here. The one important part about going to that lecture, though, is it did open up a piece of the dialogue tree for us. And that is animal masks. So um, our buddy Willie here actually has an animal mask right here, who he's aptly named Willie Jr. So, yeah, we want Willie Jr. We need that mask. We need the mask. So, uh, the problem is, you know, we don't have a lot of money. So, we are going to uh, have to sell a priceless artifact, this painting here. One of a kind. It's been in the family for generations. In fact, I think uh, his father uh, you know, drew it himself or painted it himself. I guess that's not generations, but it's a generation. There's some... Uh, value there I would I would say yeah in any case we're gonna get that thing out of there much to Grace's dismay and uh yeah okay so now we're in uh the boudoir here need a couple things we are gonna make a phone call here uh, helps if I dial the correct number though how about that great phone call they hung right up on us um make another phone call here another hang up that's good now batting a thousand here. Oh, there we go. Third time's a charm. Uh, this was all to set up 
for something that is going to happen at the end of the day here. 132, still schmoovin' here, I love it. Um, we need to go back here briefly. We got that money, right? So let's go buy that mask. We actually don't need the mask today, um, but we will need the mask, well, we'll need the thing that comes with the mask today. So we read this sign earlier, this is an optional thing, but if you do read the sign, it does say, with every purchase, you get some free Grigri. Grigri is kind of like these, uh, I don't know, little voodoo things that come with uh, every free purchase, basically, here. In this case, we have a good luck Grigri, um, which is important for us because we're going to give that to somebody named Sam at the bar, and we'll, we'll get into that when we get there. Good old Grigri. What do you know about Grigri? So you may have noticed that there was an old woman that came into that uh, drugstore earlier on in the run. And that's a voodoo drugstore, and she bought like half the shop. So we have to suspect that she knows something about voodoo, and we're doing research on that. So we're going to real quick uh, have a have a little quick conversation with her here. Um, she won't talk to us because we're just common riffraff here, but she will talk to us if we dress ourselves up as a priest. So that's um, that's how we're, you know, that's what we're doing right now. Um, this is all to get this Voodoo Hum 4 option here, and she'll also show us this very fancy bracelet, which we will uh, put our goop on here. Oh, we have a weird glitch where we can go out of bounds here. It's not valuable, or it's just swag, so there you go. Enjoy the swag. Cool, alright, so let's go to the bar. Again, we need to take a drink break here. No coffee at hand, so let's, uh, let's do something a little stronger. Uh, we're going to talk to the bartender. We're going to talk about voodoo. We're going to talk about bar patrons. We're going to talk about voodoo one more time. There we go. That's our answer. Sam and voodoo. So I talked about Sam before. Well, I kind of began to intro Sam, I should say. But this guy is a jeweler, and he has been playing this guy in chess for like 30 years, and he's lost every game. Uh, thankfully, we have good luck, Grigory. And we're like, hey, do a shot of this stuff. You're going to be all set. And wouldn't you know, he wins. Good for Sam. He earned it, that's for sure. This guy's not happy, though. In any case, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Channeling more adventure game stuff, he owes us a favor. He's a jeweler, so we're going to have... Give him the, uh, the the mold there of the, uh, the bracelet we saw, and we're going to have him put one together for us. We've got all the points. We are out of day three. That is the hardest part of the run behind us. That's really good. There is more scary stuff to come. But that's kind of a nice little uh, relief for me, I would say. So this is the first day transition that we can't skip through. Because um, Malia pops up here and gets swept into the uh, the bookstore. And I think they're becoming fast friends. That's what I can say about that. And good for them. Young love. Good stuff. Alright, so where day three was a very long 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 day day four is like the polar opposite we are going to be flying through day four um paper boy right on time shouts out to the paper boy any paper boys in the chat shouts out appreciate you all right we're gonna skip through that scene um we do have a fan over here somebody who just absolutely loves books been there all morning apparently uh, we are going to do a little bit of research here just to kick this thing off, and then we are going to roll out. Uh, we haven't seen Grandma in a little bit, so let's just check in on her. Can't ever be too fast to visit your Grandma. So we're going to get that uh, get that going there. Nice hug. Again, can't skip it, but why would you? Um, the whole point of this is to grab a point by asking about Wolfgang Ritter. Wolfgang is important because uh, he is our apparently long-lost uncle uh, who lives in Germany, and he has been calling us nonstop, and we've been like, who is this guy? These are collect calls. These are really expensive these days. This is 1993, etc., so we kind of have to do what we can here. Um, and she confirms, yeah, I've never heard of the guy. That's really strange. So we kind of put that on the back burner. Um, we've picked up our uh, fancy new bracelet, and uh, yeah, you might you might recognize this fellow here. This is Crash from, uh, what was it, day two? Or maybe the beginning of day three? Seems like forever ago now. But there's some weird stuff going on here. That's not a normal uh, discussion, nor is this a normal walk. Have you ever walked through a park like this? Very Charlie Brown, you know, meets uh, maybe something a bit more nefarious. So we're going to keep an eye on that. In fact, let's take the time to pop over here. 
and uh, we'll have a little conversation with him here. And we do have this bracelet here, which uh, lets him know, hey, we're cool. We're on the inside. We know you're up to something, and we're we know we know we just know. Um, so yeah. Crash is going to take a nap here, a bit of a violent nap, if I may say so myself, but I'm sure he'll be fine. Uh, but he has a super cool tattoo, so we're going to jot this down. We're thinking about getting some ink ourselves, so we're just going to real quick have a look. And we'll leave him, leave him sleeping there. That's fine. 161, solid day four. Again, I said it was quick and wasn't joking. So we are just moving, schmoving along here. Heavy schmovement. Whew. Take a breath here. Got a lot going on. All right, day five. Day five isn't too bad. It's not too much longer. Um, the one important bit of detail here is that uh, we are going to be informed first thing in the morning that the police department has closed the case. Uh, this is bad because uh, they didn't catch anybody. They just said, hey, it's unrelated. And uh, yeah, we're not going to catch him, which is uh, not great police work in our mind. Um so we're going to basic today, the goal is to try to reopen the case. We're going to have to do a little bit of this and that. Um, this dude absolutely loves books. Still there. Shouts out. You got to love the, uh, love the commitment here. Oops. We need to read this. Uh, I do need to do a little bit of converse, conversing with Grace here. Got some of this. We're going to do a little bit of research. Uh, we also have some things to read. Uh, so we're going to read this uh, fancy little book. It's actually a journal. Uh, we also have some stuff here. I'm just real quick going to read everything because I do not want to miss any sort of points. Not on this run. Not today. We're good. 168. Oh, we are looking great now. All right, cool. Let's just take a very casual walk to the Voodoo Museum. We need to talk to Dr. John. Aw, oh, somebody is trying to kill us. Wouldn't you know? Has been a Sierra game all along. People trying to kill us. This is actually a pretty nice game for Sierra standards, I would say, but you can die here. Thankfully, uh, we are in good hands here. We know how to handle snakes. Um, oh, speaking of snakes, we need to identify a snake, don't we? So whilst we're doing this, uh, why don't we have a look at the snake scale that was embedded in our body because we were, you know, nearly killed by a snake there. So there it is. Looks pretty good. Oh, it's a match. Great. So this is uh, really great news for us because we have a matching s snake scale and that, uh, you know, kind of checks out since... Uh, <laughs> We were just, you know, attacked by a snake. It all, all starts to check out here. I'm going to do a quick Yui here uh, because we actually need to stop at the university briefly. Um, our buddy Hartridge here uh, had some details set up for us. Uh, and it's really important for us to pick up his hardworking notes. And oh, it looks like he's taking a nap as well. A lot of people sleeping on the job here. You hate to see it. I'm going to reset the speed because it looks like it got goofed up. That police par department will do that to you. Um, cool. So we're going to grab his notes and we're going to head into the police department now, the aforementioned. Got 179. That looks good on a, a point situation here. And we'll go talk to Mosley. So again, we need to basically convince him to reopen this case because all the higher ups, so to speak, said, yeah, we're not looking into this. Uh, don't don't ask about any more questions. Uh, we're, we're done with this uh, this whole thing. So we'll real quick just uh, reopen the case. And he's like, well, you got to give me some good information here. So here's a news article from a, uh, a good publisher. Here are those snake scales that we've uh, done the, the detective work for you for their matches. Don't worry about it. Here's our VV, uh, which is uh, proves that they're all kind of connected here. And then Hartridge did have some interesting notes here. So we're just going to show those uh, over to Detective Mosley uh, to keep make sure things are, are going there. Uh, and we have all the points for day five. We are about to finish this thing up. We just need to dip on out of here. Um, so here we go. Off he goes. He's like, I'm going to I'm going to take this to the streets. We're going to do some investigating out there. And we're like, hey, we're going to go to bed. Had enough of that. We're moving into day six, so we're over kind of the halfway point. Although the time, uh, the time of thing is actually, you know, the first five days are much slower than the second five days. Does that make sense? I think it does. All right, so here we are. 
We're doing another phone call here. Uh, things with Malia getting pretty, in, you know, interesting here. Uh, that's was going to sort of be our you up text, but uh, in 1993 edition of that. Uh, no answer, though, which is a bit of a bummer for us. Uh, so we need to do some things with Grace here. So we need to get that tattoo. We've decided the ink is good. We want it. We're going to give it a shot. We're going to get that super cool tattoo here. We're going to read the newspaper, and we're also going to... Uh, yeah, read some stuff. Read some other things, I should say. Um, there may have been a ritual sacrifice on the floor. This happens. It's uh, New Orleans, am I right? So, uh, yeah, no worries there. Um, so, real quick, we're going to um, request uh, some research. We're going to do this, and we should be good to go. All right, so, that's right. We need to talk about the ink here. So we're not maybe 100% ready to get this thing permanent on us, but uh, we're going to ask Grace to just, you know, very, uh, you know, nicely draw it on there. Something that's uh, that's tasteful right there. So it looks good. Um, once this is in place here, that is basically all we need to do here for the day. Uh, actually, I take it back. Look at that mysterious note coming through. So we'll pick that up. We'll read that in a little bit. All right, it's time to do our own bit of graffiti here. So um, you've been wanting us to tag up some uh, some sweet cement here. We're going to do just that. Um, so we've got a new code here. A note. A note. All right, cool. We should be set on that. Uh, we need to use a couple things here briefly. Sorry, brain is, uh, brain is going to do the brain thing yeah. for a moment. Uh, where are we here? There we are. And we're good. We're ready to go. So what I did there really fast was just combine the two codes together. That's a fresh bit of voodoo code or voodoo graffiti on the wall there. Uh, so I've kind of combined the knowledge. We've got most of the letters together thanks to Madame Moonbeam. Um, I've opened and read the note from Mosley, uh, which is important. And we're just waiting for the groundskeeper to uh, move along his merry way. Uh, since we cannot do any graffiti while the guy is here. I mean, it's this poor, poor, guy, poor guy's job to basic clean up after us so all right moment to uh focus here hang tight folks oh where are you at e there you are first time every time right yeah there we go okay cool so we're set with that um we wrote some secret messages on there and i'll get to that in a moment um, spe uh, speaking of secret messages, let's grab this uh, drumming book here, and we're going to basically interpret whatever the heck this guy is playing. Um, thankfully, we already know what it is, but Gabriel doesn't. There it is. So there's going to be a voodoo, secret voodoo meeting uh, tonight in the swamp. So we'll get to that soon. Um, we need the beignet guy to not be here. So we're going to ask the beignet person to basically move... Move on over to um, a different place. We're going to say, hey, go back to the uh, police station. They love your beignets there. You're going to do so much better than just sitting there uh, where the hot dog guy used to be. So great stuff there uh, across the board. Uh, we should be in a pretty good spot here. 210. Yep, we are great. Yeah, we're at 212. We're perfect. All right, so let's talk beignets here, folks. There's a really cool glitch that uh, I've done a couple times now on accident, but you can actually transport this beignet guy from this screen through the rest of the game, and it is amazing. I'm not going to do it because it will slow down the run, and uh, it also gets a little bit uh, sketchy in terms of stability, but um, if you're interested, I think I've posted some of the pictures over in the Speedy Adventures Discord. If not, I'll do it. I'll, you know, we'll get it done. In any case, here we are. Uh, the beignet guy is important because we need the beignet guy to be here so that Officer Frick, great name, the guy down here, uh, will leave his post and allow us into uh, Mosley's office here. And this is important because he has some tracking devices that we absolutely need to get here. Speaking of tracking, look at these segues here. Uh, I need to go down to the museum here. We're just going to pop in and say hi quick to uh, the Willy. Shouts out the Willy. Now we're heading down to the museum, uh, as intended before. So, um, the graffiti that I put together, um, 
was telling the voodoo people to say to bring this box. It's called the Seki Meduli. Uh, also great name. Uh, let me just make sure we're good. 218. Oh, we're, we're cooking. We're, we're doing very good. Um, the whole point of that, bringing that with us, is that we've stuck a tracking device inside of it so now we can find out where this uh, secret meeting is. Um, this is random every time, so we just need to kind of be careful here and uh, keep an eye on the old tracking unit on the side. There it is. That wasn't too bad. So sometimes you'll get really slow ones. Um, we're going to put that mask to good use here. You can die here, so we're going to be very careful about the, the selection here. All right, and there we go. One of the... Uh, Things you notice is we turned the detail down in the very beginning there. That's usually a pretty poppin' party. Uh, but uh, because the detail is all the way to the bottom, there's just a couple people, a couple stragglers showing up, so kind of funny. We are good on points, folks. We're still making it happen here. Um, there's no skip in this scene here, so uh, we did skip a lot there. So just to get you up to speed, we did infiltrate the meeting. It was a great time, had fun. Uh, they did find out who we were and tried to kill us. However, uh, Grace came through and, and, you know, saved the day, as she often does. Um, so she just tossed the shirt down, go clean yourself up, and uh, off we go. Um, while we're here, we're just going to have another phone call here. We're going to try calling Germany again. Greetings from Germany. This is the guy saying, hey, I'm, uh, I'm your long-lost Uncle Wolfgang. Uh, you ought to hang out. And uh, we should we should catch up because there's some crazy stuff that you're getting into now, and I know about it over here in Germany. So things are getting a little real, you could say. Um, so yeah, we'll think about it. It's kind of expensive, though, as you could imagine. It's not just something you can pop in there and fly from Louisiana down to down to Germany. But uh, we are going to go into the tomb here. That's free. So we're just going to pop in right there, and we're going to... There's no light in here, so we grabbed the flashlight a bit earlier. And we are going to just uh, take a look inside this one particular spot there. And uh, it happened quick, but that was actually detected mostly inside uh, the little slab there. So that's uh, looking pretty bad as far as it goes for Mosley. Mark Hamill. Sheesh, right? Anyways, he did happen to leave his uh, wallet there. He's not there anymore, which is peculiar, as you could imagine. But he did leave his wallet. So we'll grab that. And actually, speaking of the wallet, let's just see what's inside the wallet. Oh, it's a credit card. Okay, well, we won't use that at all. Out of respect, right? Okay, so we've got all the things that we need to here. 237, looking great right now. And here we are. Let's just make a quick phone call and just we'll just see how much tickets are, right? We can look. Okay, they were pretty expensive, but we did remember that we had that card. And I mean, is he going to use the card anymore? So we'll just charge this flight to the game. And so, yeah, we're heading on out to Germany. This is a worldwide uh, buddy cop movie now. We're doing a little, it's a road trip movie, really. Um, you can actually lose the game right here, by the way. If you hold spacebar down as you're driving through that cutscene, uh, you will careen off the cliff and die. It's a weird Easter egg that's in there. Um, so don't hold down spacebar. It's easy to kind of settle on stuff like that, depending on how you have your game mapped and stuff. But um, yeah, be careful there. <laughs> okay, so that's Gertie. She just gave us a nice uh, warm welcome to Schloss Ritter, which is the uh, the family castle. It's always exciting when your family gets a castle, I say. Um, so we're just going to quickly look around at the chapel panels here. Um, we've been told that we may very well be a Schottenjäger, which is a shadow uh, kind of a warrior person. We kind of fight evil. Um, and this is really good for us because uh, there happens to be evil afoot and stuff. So we're going to go through the initiation ceremony uh, a little informally because, uh, you know, normally I'm sure there's uh, people who walk you through these things but um we have to do it ourselves and first things first we got to get a haircut so let's go do that i'm gonna leave and then we are going to quickly pick up a giant dagger pick up some salt i'm going to talk to gertie now because i always forget to do this we'll just talk about that portal poem real quick that is a missable point you need to look at that big door that was on our left and then also come back in here and ask her about it and uh we really don't need to talk to her directly anymore 
uh, in the run, so it's easy to miss that. So we'll do that. Okay, so the initiation ceremony is uh, get salty. Um, add a little bit of uh, blood to the, to the mix because uh, blood, sweat, and tears for uh, speed running or something. We're going to just kneel down. We're going to read this uh, very interesting uh, route that I put together on how to do 100% uh, running here. Now we're a shot Jaeger. It's that easy. Anybody can do it. How to be a shot Jaeger. Dummy's Guide. Um, all right, so we are uh, spending the night here. We've had a nice one. And it's day eight. There's 10 days in all, so we are closing in, folks. We're closing in on what could be a very good run. Uh, we are going to use this giant key on the giant door. This is a tough puzzle. Uh, but in here, it gets a little bit spicier, so we actually need to do a little bit of reading. Um, and so we need to remember exactly the order in which to do these uh, readings. Uh, otherwise, yeah, things get a little crazy. But so far, so good. Last one should be oh or yonder. Oh, I love Gabriel there. All right, cool. So we should have just about everything that we need. I am going to just check. Yeah, we're we're cruising here, folks. Yeah, great. All right, so we're going to use the uh, Africa book here, and we will charge it to the game. Right? Well, why not? Let's max that thing out. So we're flying to Africa now, folks. So the main thing is that uh, we found out that this whole thing behind everything is a uh, this kind of demon uh, that's possessing some folks in New Orleans, and the demon's named Tetalo. What do you know about Tetalo? Um... And so, yeah, apparently this demon is located here in Africa. So we've uh, just kind of chartered a trip out here. And this is where the shadows intensify. Uh, we do need to fight the uh, narrator here a little bit. Um, this was never expected to run on a machine, I think, like a modern machine is. So um, even when I was playing through this casually... Yeah, I mean it's it's just a little a little wild here. So you're going to be hearing a lot of uh, a shadow, a shadow, a shadow, because um, the narrator really wants us to know uh, that we are probably being watched. Something is wrong here, right? So we're going to just um, keep that in mind, and we're just going to go around this very confusing uh, area here and do all the things that we need to do. It helps if I pick the right slate up. This is number 11. Cool. All right, so now we just kind of go in order here. So this is number 10. I don't know if anybody did this uh, puzzle casually. It is uh, a really tricky one, in my opinion. Um, it's it's fair. It is fair in the end, but... Um, excuse me. But it is a, a difficult puzzle, I feel. All right, so we're moving on to... The eighth tablet, Ooh, that one, ESPN, the Ocho shouts out. Okay, here we go. Uh, so this one, I believe, is number six. Go into number five. From number four. Shouts out to Bilbul, by the way, who I believe is the person who did this routing for this section. It's uh, some big brain stuff, I mean it. Um Getting all of these done in sort of a, a smooth fashion is is no joke. Uh, quite a difficult task. Cool. All right, so we've gotten all of our uh, pieces together. So we're going to use this magic stick that we picked up. And here's another spot that gets very, very scary. Um, because we can die here, uh, as as you do. So we're just not going to do that. We're going to choose to not die. It's that easy. That part's very scary. <laughs> we got through it. That's great. Um, all right. Here we are. That's Wolfgang, by the way, guy uh, that we were talking to on the phone. Uh, we are going to save his life. Pretty nimble for an old guy, but you're going to see he's uh, he's not doing great. He's a pretty old dude. Um, but shouts out to the to the help here. So he's going to hobble all this way here. Um, and yeah, weird pretenses to meet your uncle, but you know, stranger things have happened. Um, we are going to just quickly admire some of the craftsmanship here. It's quite an altar we have. So, um, from what we understand, there, uh, there is some sort of talisman in here. 
that gives the Schottenjägers, which is uh, Wolfgang and, and ourselves, I suppose, um, like power, like special powers. Um, so we're going to try to lift this thing up. It's inside this altar. Um, so we're getting this thing set up for us. And the plan here is to, uh, yeah, lift it up, grab the uh, the talisman, and get, up, get on out of here. Um, this thing's really heavy, though. Uh, as the bars alone needed two people to, to move them, and, uh, you know, Wolfgang's not really in the best shape of his life or anything. Can't imagine that Gabriel Knight is either, but that's that. Um, so we're going to steal a heart from that dead zombie thing that was lying on the ground, because it turns out we actually need a heart to open the whole thing. Um... Long story short, Wolfgang used his heart, um, maybe against his will, and uh, on the lighter note, we did get the talisman, so we are truly a shot in Jaeger now. Um, so we're going to, you know, use Mosley's credit card to fly back to New Orleans here, and all that is left is to infiltrate the secret voodoo hound for or cartel headquarters, um, and yeah, just, you know, take care of business. Save the day, as it were. Uh, you may have noticed that uh, Grace uh, had some trouble there and may have been kidnapped by the Voodoo Cartel. So we are going to... Uh, we'll look into that. We'll get there. First, we need to make a plan with uh, Mosley, who turns out he's not dead. Uh, we are not going to let him know about the credit card situation. We are just going to let him know about the plan. Um, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. And here we are. I'm going to real quick just make sure we read that. We need to read uh, our newspaper for the day. And we are looking pretty good, folks. I think we've got all the points we need. But this uh, this next section here, as per usual, is not easy pickings. This is where this game becomes a real Sierra game. You can start soft locking, or, or I guess like uh, if, if you know, you, there's a lot of dead ends, I should say, down here. You can die in a variety of ways. Uh, yeah, it's it's um, it's um good times here. So we're going to stick the magic stick under the pew along with the tracker. That way, um, Detective Mosley can join us a bit later on. Otherwise, uh, one of those dead ends happens. Um, so while we're down here, we've made it into the secret voodoo cartel. It's a nice place. Shouts out. Looks good. Keeping up with it. It's very clean. Good housekeeping there. All right, so we're going to grab this book here. This is sort of evidence to incriminate the group, uh, which we need uh, in a big way here. Uh, I am going to head into this little nook here, if I can. Thank you very much. We're going to play the, the drums. We've gone far too long hearing about the drums, and we've never played them. So that is what we're doing. And we're great. We're, we're natural at it. So that actually summons out Brother Eagle. So Brother Eagle uh, is actually Dr. John, the guy who tried to kill us before. Twice now, actually. So he's a guy you don't want to run into. Uh, we did pull him out of this room, which is a totally normal room, right? Nothing weird there. Um, but he is wandering around now, so we need to be extremely careful not to run into uh, Dr. John. Otherwise, you know, we might die. Um, we are going to pop into this first room here. This is a 100% uh, exclusive. We're going to steal some money from the uh, cartel, which I think is uh, a funny little thing that can happen. Um, so that gets us a point. We're going to head down to room 11, which is a great room. And uh, yeah, this is another 100% specific room there. Um, and then from here, we need to get into room 8. Well, that's room 8 there. We actually don't want to go into room 8 yet, but we will go into room 7 uh, because we do need to pick these up. So two masks and two costumes. One for me, one for Mosley. Um, so far, so good. We have not run into Dr. John at all. And then once you enter this room, room eight, you are locked in. You cannot leave the room again. So if you didn't, you know, leave the stuff for Mosley to come down, you're, you're in bad shape. If you are, you know, didn't grab the uh, costumes, you're in bad shape. Um, we do have, this is the talisman, by the way. We have that talisman. We're going to uh, resurrect Grace here, who's uh, in sort of a coma situation. I don't really know what has, what's going on there. I'm not a doctor. Don't ask me. Um, but from there, we're just going to give that to Mosley, and we'll take the wolf one here for ourselves, or the wolf one, if you will. And uh, yeah, hopefully we have enough points here, because we are in the final battle here now. 
So this room is probably the worst affected by the detail being down. Uh, there's no one here. This guy is going ham though. And you know, you gotta, gotta appreciate that. Committed to the bit. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna hang out here. Normally this room is packed full of, of interesting things here, but it's, uh, we're trying to go fast. In the end, we are trying to go fast. I have no idea if I have been going fast, but I really am trying. Uh, so yeah, we're just doing some normal dances as you do. Um, we're just waiting for all this stuff to come together. Uh, the plan here is for Grace, who's now faking being sort of in a coma or dead or whatever. Uh, she's gonna pop up at the right time. Um, but we're gonna pop out our own little talisman here and say, hey, get out of here. And that gives Grace time to uh, get backhanded into the other side of the room. Although Detective Mosley uh, is taking care of business. And uh, again, you need a heart to like to sacrifice on an altar for it to open. So we now have uh, the altar open here. And on that particular section, you can see that there is a talisman there. This is Tetalo in the end. Um, which you can die here if you're not careful. Uh, we're just going to take that and smash it on the ground. Take that, Tetalo. Your evil deeds shall now be paid for. Um, and we are going to try and save Malia here. We, we do like Malia. Tetalo has been... Uh, kind of possessing Malia for a while here. And that's time. No. That is time. And uh, yeah, that is, uh, that's one game in, in the pocket, folks. Uh, Gabriel Knightson is the fathers. I have no idea how fast that was. I think we were ahead of estimate and that's all I can really ask. Um, this is some great voice acting again. Tim Curry playing uh, Gabriel Knight, which is great stuff here. Don't you let go! I don't know if we have time to listen to uh, some of these great lines from uh, yes. Gabriel Knight, so I'm going to assume we, we do here. So they're going to sit here, and this is kind of the closing sequence, right? I don't want to spoil the game too much, but we're going to sit here and talk back and forth. We're kind of... We've seen a lot of people live, a lot of people die. You can see that there's like actual hell coming out of the middle of uh, New Orleans here. It's been a tough day. Um, so we're kind of talking about, well, like, what's next? What are we going to do now? Give up your PhD? Give up your PhD? I mean, there's a lot of intricate discussions happening. Things with a lot of weight. Um, so, yeah, Grace is going to go into a whole bunch of things here. I'm going to just kind of skip through because I know we've, we're a little behind. But, like, look at this. Lines and lines. A lot of important dialogue here. What does Gabriel have to say about this, though? You think too much. You think too much. I think the most it's got away with words. Sheesh. Of young women. Um, all right, cool. So let's just bring you to the credits here. Shouts out you know to folks who worked yeah, on this I game. Um, this is the best credit sequence in like any adventure game, uh, in my opinion. Uh, it is got a great uh, musical soundtrack and uh, the way that they do some of the designs here, especially Nathan Gam. Shouts out to the Gam's crew. Uh, is amazing. And 342 out of 342, it was a real 100% run, so I'm very happy about that. So bring in the gams here. Let's go, folks. If you've got any dancing uh, emotes, now is a great time to pop them in there because it is a uh, it's a jam. We've got jams going on here. All right, GGs to the wolves. Thank you, thank you. There's gams, the shades, always on. Um, yeah, maybe like it's like a two minute break if you guys don't mind. If it's uh, too much, actually, I've already lost the game. It just crashed out. So let's just get right into it.